this lesson, we will begin our discussion on one of the more controversial and idealistic aspects of jurisprudential thought, which is Marxism, as expounded by the seminal Karl Marx. At the very outset, one of the fundamental things that we must understand about the Marxist philosophy is that Karl Marx, as well as his predecessors and successors, believed that social development is influenced by material, economic, and environmental conditions. Now, you would notice that unlike a previous lesson that we did, specifically on the pure theory of law as expounded by Hans Kelsen, where we considered that jurisprudential thought must be divorced from all other aspects of society, Marxism believes in the complete polar opposite of it. And to a great degree, by and large, this is the reality. Uh, many political realities does not afford us to remove jurisprudential thought from any other aspects of society. Marx believed that the function of philosophy is not to interpret reality at all, but to change the world. He felt that the jurisprudential philosophy that he expounded, the principles, were in fact an instrument or a tool to change the world, as opposed to just proliferating ideologies. He believed that there were certain classes in place and a hierarchy of those classes which entailed exploitation of the working masses. This stages of class struggle, he believed, stem from a pre-capitalistic society followed by the capitalistic society and a utopian future where he believed that the answer to most of the questions of man is to have a socialistic society. So on the one hand, firstly, in the pre-capitalistic society, people shared commodities equally and control was through communal morality and social pressure as opposed to one person or a group of individuals controlling all others. This, however, moved on, he believed, to the capitalistic society, by and large where we are today, where capitalists attempt to dominate the working class. He feels that at one point, tension will break out, and at that moment, a revolt will lead to the working class gaining control. This, in turn, moves the world into an ideal socialist society, in which commodities will be distributed according to the maxim from each according to his ability, to each according to his need. In essence, Marx believed that the greatest evil lies in excess. So in a socialistic society, each individual will have everything according to the need, as opposed to just the want. This, in turn, can be considered as an emergence of a completely classless society. Whether we see this in reality today is much to be seen. Marx also believed that in a capitalistic society, Law is used by the ruling class as an instrument to keep the working masses in control for the exploitation of labor. Now, many jurists and academics have outlined and have tried to summarize this into different aspects of society, looking at the real world and connecting it with Marx's philosophy. But it can be actually encapsulated into three main limbs, how exactly this exploitation of labor as Marx believed occurs. Firstly, modern work is alienating. Many find that as a crafter, as a person who builds or creates something, you put a bit of yourself into your creation. When you put your blood, sweat and tears and your hard work and effort into a product, into a service, that has a unique part and parcel of you in it. So work, in essence, can be the source of the greatest joys of a person. However, in order to feel fulfilled, you need to have a part of yourself in the work that you create. Marx believed that in a capitalistic society, in the capitalistic world rather, work is so specialized because of the nature of the output that is created. Each individual is involved in something which he or she might not feel a part of or might not feel that can contribute sufficiently to have a sense of joy. Therefore, this fulfillment is not created because of work alienating the society and the person and the worker. Secondly, modern work is insecure. Primarily, because the type of work as considered earlier is so specialized, it is quite robotic and technical, quite clinical for, for the most part. Therefore, 
In capitalism, any person is expendable. As soon as the costs rise and technology evolves or improves, the workforce can be let go. Money is the driving factor as opposed to human values. Thirdly, the instability of capitalism. There is a sense of perpetual crisis which is created in a primarily capitalistic society. In essence, Marxism can be indoctrinated into four primary limbs. What Karl Marx and his successors primarily believed was that firstly, that the law is determined by the economy. In essence, the law he considered is a superstructure on an economic system. The law therefore is dictated quite substantially by who you are and what you earn and what place you have in society. Secondly, he believed that there is a class character to law and that law is used by rulers to keep subjects or keep the working masses under control. Thirdly, that there is a distinct identity or a distinction between law and state. Marx believed that the state exists primarily because there is an unequal distribution of commodities. And that finally, the utopian ideal to strive towards is to have a completely classless society where there is no need for law and state. While the idealistic notions of Karl Marx have proliferated and motivated many across centuries in not just one or two countries but the world over and have been utilized for class struggle and revolt as well, there have been certain criticisms which have been leveled primarily on the notion that there is a distinct disconnect between Marx's philosophy and the reality as a whole. First and foremost, there is in fact a division of society which has steadily grown over many centuries, in effect called the middle class, and they too have substantial influence, which Marx and the Marxist theory does not necessarily account for. In Marxism, there is a clear polar opposite which exists in society, namely the capitalists as well as the working masses. But once we consider that in the modern world, the middle class provides for a greater or substantial amount of workforce as well as influence by that means, it is unlikely to consider the reality of society as the same as Marx considered. However, a little bit of a caveat in that context, specifically when we discuss Marxism, just like any other jurisprudential thought that we have looked at in the previous lessons, we must always consider the time factor and the period and the place in which the philosopher who expounded it lived. Secondly, laws are not necessarily, at least in the modern context, instruments of domination. It is not just obligation imposing types of rules, but rights as well are now prevalent. For example, human rights are indoctrinated in not just constitutions, but also precedent case law in many different countries, which provides a duty imposing model for the state in relation to their citizens. That was a succinct outline of Marxism, one of the more controversial as well as idealistic jurisprudential philosophies. In the next lesson, we will round off our discussion on the different philosophies by having a look at one of the more balanced aspects of jurisprudential thought, which is the sociological school. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Click on a subject of interest to learn more.